one. All right, welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. I'm your host, Cardin Ellis, with Cody the Oracle. Hey, everybody. And we have a super interesting show today. Okay, we were recently at the Santa Monica Rally for Yang, going through the 4th Street uh, Promenade following the Yang Gang, and we bumped into a really interesting character who is an electoral volunteer who was confident that Andrew Yang could not beat Donald Trump based strictly upon height and evidence that he had read in The Economist and other sources. So we decided to dive into this data and look at how height affects national and presidential elections, both electoral and popular vote. And if what this guy says is true, and let me tell you, the data is intriguing. It has to do with everything from just general attractiveness to fear of disease. And we're going to be diving into some journals from Psychology Today, other reputable journals, and data from the past 200 years of presidential elections in the United States. This is going to be a blast. But before we bury the lead, Cody, Give us the raw data from Santa Monica. Show us what was going on. Yeah. So I guess the simplest way, we have a short video I put together just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of what it looked like down there in Santa Monica and then what exactly the premise is we're going to be talking about here. So I'm going to roll this clip really quick. And it didn't work. <laughs> you know? Let me let me say this. Mm -hmm. In any elect presidential election, uh -huh. I'm an electoral uh, inspector. I volunteer as an electoral inspector. This is awesome. my way okay. of giving a little bit of my time. So it's it's rough on those days. And uh, yeah. okay. In every presidential contest, it's the tallest guy who wins. Okay. Reagan was taller than the guys he was competing. Reagan, Ronald yeah. Reagan was taller. Yeah, he was a giant. Than okay. Dukakis, all right. Bush Senior was taller than any of his competitors. Okay, that's true. Trump versus Hillary Clinton. He's, Forget everything. Yeah, he's six foot he's three. He's a giant, yeah. and she is so short. It doesn't happen. The moment they appear anywhere on a debate, on a chain, and you see this, it is a psychological thing. It's the tallest guy who wins, and Trump is taller than Wang. All right, so as you can see, Nathan, super cool cat. Love your hair, Nathan. If you're watching this, dug it. I tried it, couldn't do it. Anyway, uh, he had a lot of data here to support his claim that Andrew Yang, we'll have to forgive his mispronunciation of the, uh, of the last name Yang, cannot win due to height. And he references a lot of specific elections. For example, Reagan versus Dukakis, you know, so on and so forth. So we decided to actually look up some data on how height has affected presidential elections over mm, the last 200 years. Cody, show us what's going on. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. When he when he made a claim like that, I, you know, I guess admittedly thinking over it, I'm like, I, that makes sense, right? Like, I guess like, I could think of the taller person winning an election, and uh, he referenced those. In a second, I have pulled up, uh, it's not a complete list of the field, but a couple of pictures of the 2020 Democrats standing shoulder to shoulder and kind of what it looks like when they're on the debate stages, as he referenced. But this was a really fascinating study we found, and I guess these are a couple of guys doing some of the leading work on um, what height relates to elections. And this was a fascinating. I loved how well, sure, I love how simple the study is and how the result does actually seem kind of logical for what it is. Anyway, here we go. So. Uh, let's say, with this background research in mind, to test our argument about a preference for leaders with greater physical stature, we conducted a study that took the perspective of followers versus leaders. We gave our subjects, U.S. and international undergraduate students at different schools in different parts of the country, three tasks. Draw the ideal national leader, okay. the typical citizen, and then a meeting of the leader and citizen. Okay. And then skipping down ahead, uh, what they found was that more than twice as many subjects, so 64 to 31 roughly, drew the leader being taller than the citizen. Okay. Just so that's the, the subconsciousness of it, which is one kind of goofy stuff. Like I said, I like the, the, simple, the simpleness of it, but what does it actually mean in the real world? Well, in the real world, and I believe these are the same researchers, Greg Murray and... Um, or at least one of the researchers, Greg Murray, what that means in the real world is that going back to 1789 through 2012, and Trump was the tallest candidate and he won again, so this would keep tracking up, it's not necessarily a slam dunk, but 58% of the time, the taller candidate won the presidential election. Now, the weird thing was, 
when you take into account um, the popular vote, that goes up to 67%. So That's over two-thirds. Getting there. Yeah, exactly. By 0.7%. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very very close, right? But our point, whatever. But still, so you can see how not only subconsciously, and again, they mentioned it in the article. I, I kind of skimmed over it in when I was talking about it. But when they were doing this study with the students, these were American and international students. So this isn't something that's, you know, unique to American culture. The idea that the taller candidates have some... I mean, that's really fascinating to me. When someone just sits down and draws a leader and a citizen, the leader's bigger. Because it makes sense. Now, there's, you know, artistic reasons where it's like, well, uh-huh. you know, I he's not like... Because, lit- you know, when they break down art, they'll say, like, well, why does someone draw so looking so exaggerated? And they'll say, okay. well, they're not literally X, but in order to kind of get across the idea that this is the leader and he is above the citizen, we make him taller, right? Yeah. I, I don't know if that's what it is. Um, but however, like you said, when you go to the real world, it does happen where 58% of the time over hundreds of years in one country, America, the taller candidate wins. And Hey, if you're a gambling man, then you'll take the 8%. You know yeah, what I mean? like, I, I, it is statistically significant at that point. So I think it's interesting. That's one of the things I loved about Nathan, like always a gambler. You know, the very first thing he did, instead of arguing ideas, about whether or not he could win or not. He's like, hey, you want to bet? Like, that was awesome. Anyway, um, can you pull up the two articles that I looked up? I actually dug up the Economist article that Nathan referenced himself, and it was quite intriguing. Uh, I believe the title was something pretty simple, like uh, Height Matters or something like that. And also, I looked up the Psychology Today journal, based off the American Journal of Psychology, um, data just to see exactly where this phenomenon comes from, right? So what's the title of the, uh, actually, no, I can read it for you right here. It says so, height is might was the title. Yeah, of height the- is might. That was it. Now in this article, it's interesting. I'm betting this is the one that Nathan read because it was from 2007 before Barack Obama had won. Okay. And it did reference a bunch of elections in which the height rule was basically followed. Okay. But it also pointed out a couple where it wasn't. For example, Al Gore, who is inf- infamously a, a, a giant. Okay. Did lose to George Bush. Well, John Kerry as well. Yeah, and John Kerry, both taller. Okay. However, Al Gore did famously win the popular vote. So once again, we're back into the electoral versus popular vote. And we have to also wonder why. Why is height so important? Some people call it the halo effect in psychology. For those of you that may have studied psychology, um, may remember the halo effect. But I thought this was super intriguing. Okay. If you look in psychological science, okay, it's a journal of psychological science. You have to read this study called Beauty at the Ballot Box. Disease threats predict preferences for physically attractive leaders. They did a study on all the people that were winning all the elections and why people were voting for them, and they found four intriguing things. One, Okay, using real world voting data and laboratory based experiments like fake elections with um, fictional characters, they found support for the relationship between height and electoral success in congressional uh, districts with elevated disease threats, physically attractive candidates are more likely to be elected. So if you live in an area where there's actually a legitimate threat from a vector of disease, there is a higher, a statistically higher propensity for you to elect not only more physically attractive, but also much taller candidates as your leaders. They also found that they, you know, perform a physically attractive uh, political candidates, which just makes sense. You'd rather look at a good looking mug for the State of the Union address than an ugly looking mug, right? And in a final study, they demonstrated these findings are related to leadership preferences, specifically rather than preferences for physically attractive group members more generally. All right, so this was super intriguing that maybe left over biologically from our caveman days, we're voting for taller people for threat of disease and obviously attractive halo effect. And what does this spell for Andrew Yang? That's the question right here. Let's take a look at the competition. We know Donald Trump, as Nathan referenced, is what? What is he, Cody? 6'2", 6'3"? I believe Donald Trump, not only is he 6'3", he's actually the third high, according to Wikipedia, right? (laughs) But according to Wikipedia, he's the the third tallest president in United States history. Who's he behind? Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson and Abraham Lincoln. Oh, my man, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, yeah, he was a giant. I he thought you were going to say my man, Lyndon B. Johnson. Oh, yeah, no, no, you no. You don't no, hear no. that very often, LBJ my man. LBJ was Lee. a horrible man. 
<laughs> well, but but no. with that in mind, though, so I'm gonna really quickly. Okay. I'm gonna flash this image on screen, and I do think it'll be kind of interesting to think actually what does come to mind right away when you see this, because this, like I said, this isn't everyone who's competing as a Democrat in 2020. It's uh, one night when they're doing two night elections, um, but stuck. But later on, we'll get, a little bit. We'll get into the controversy of Andrew Yang's height, and we'll use this image for evidence. Um, but I do have to admit, man, like Cory Booker over Buttigieg, like I, I couldn't vote for Buttigieg, Buttigieg <laughs> over Booker at that point. Uh, <laughs> even when you look him on stage that way, Julian Castro looks like a little kid. It looks like he doesn't belong. Oh, like I have man. to admit, I have to admit, there's some things immediately right away that do jump out. Beto, I don't like Beto, but he does kind of stand <laughs> out a little bit. When he's the tallest guy on stage, he looks like the uh, the most uh, you know regal. Do you have that group. picture of Beto next to Buttigieg still? I do actually have. Have oh, you flashed that already? No, but we can pull that one up. Um, oh, this so one this is actually, hilarious. We're, we're going to get into this stuff in a little bit here in a second. But yeah, so this was a, a tweet that went around a while ago. It was pretty funny. And it said, a criticism to Beto aside, it was nice for him to help this lost boy find his mom at the airport today. <laughs> and Beto's 6'4". I believe Buttigieg's height's officially unknown. But I mean, like, he's definitely not six foot. He gets dwarfed by, Be- uh, by, uh, by Beto. Oh, man. Um, which is funny, but and we want to get into, if we're going to talk about how height seems to be, I don't want to say like a tiebreaker necessarily, but it seems to be when you get to like the far margins. It's Statistically w- significant, we should yeah, say. It could, it, could, it, could, it could be a difference, perhaps, depending yeah. on a lot of things, right? So let's look at the heights of some of the 2020 Democrats. And so Elizabeth Warren is at five foot eight. I think that you'd think that could be one of the things, excuse me, if height is anything at all, I mean, Hillary's five seven, right? Yeah. Kamala's five. Kamala's five foot two. Hold on one minute. I had no idea Kamala Harris was five foot two. Yeah, she, look, she's tiny she on was, that stage. She, but she was no, because she's six inches shorter than Elizabeth Warren. So she's wearing something. She's right? rocking some heels, yeah, man. She's six inches shorter than Elizabeth Warren, yeah. and they look about the same height <laughs> right here. That is hilarious. Holy cow! I, I'm sorry, guys. That, that just didn't that didn't register the first time I read it out loud. Just a full a full foot shorter than Cory Booker. And a foot and a half shorter than Beto O'Rourke. Uh, Biden's Tulsi Gabbard's five eight. Brittany the Shadows five eight. Okay. Yeah. Warren. Uh, Warren and um, is it, does it say Tulsi's height? Well, Warren's five eight as well. So um, now the reason why this article brought up is there's some controversy about Andrew Yang's height. Uh, some places have him listed as five foot seven. He's not five foot seven. Uh, I think five eleven to six foot's the more generally accepted listed height. I mean, yeah. If you look at him standing next to Beto. There's no way he's, you know, shorter than, gosh, he's only, what, maybe four inches shorter than Beto, and Beto's 6'4"? Like around six foot, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, Plus, so the, when we've seen him in person, there's no way he's less than 5'11". Yeah, but also, using the height theory, right? Uh-huh. The reason why I think the height theory is more, you have to kind of get past five, six, seven, eight, nine things first before that starts coming into an election. Because I wouldn't look and say, oh, yeah, clearly Beto O'Rourke and uh, Cory Booker are doing very good in this election because they're tall. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think when you get to the end and all of a sudden it's like, eh, it's getting pretty close. We have to pick them. That might be where we see it. Because it, it's not doing any. It might have helped them get this far, but Beto and Booker aren't going to win this thing because yeah. they're. <laughs> Over six foot. You know and, what I mean? And a perfect, so example, a perfect example of that comes from, if you can go back to that graphic at the bottom of the Economist article called Height is Might. Oh, you couldn't do it? That's fine. I'm going to send you a screenshot right now. Uh, hold on here. Uh, oh, take it back. You could. There we are. Excellent. Okay. It's going to be at the bottom. Awesome. It's below that. No, no. I, I, I uh, unfortunately... Um Shout outs to The Economist. I do not subscribe to The Economist, so I'm not able to pull up the full article. Oh, it's all right. I just sent you a screenshot right here, my man. If you could pull that out, that would be perfect. Because they did something interesting. They calibrated this study for height back in 2007, based off the original article that we found that we believe Nathan was referencing. Okay. Uh, John McCain, 5'7". Rudy Giuliani, 5'9 which at this point in May of... No, not May, but like in... 2007, there was a point where Rudy Giuliani was the front runner for president, right? You always got that. Well, according to the article, I have no idea. I can't, but you you always have to be curious. Whenever anyone lists a half an inch on their height, it's like really. Yeah. So <laughs> I I basically go. I I minus an inch and a half. He's five eight. If you list at five <laughs> nine and a half, you're five eight. Like there's no there's no legitimate reason. You know, John McCain is not five seven and a half. Hillary Clinton's not five six and a half. 
Barack oh. Obama's not six one and a half. They, they, no. Okay, so what's interesting is they did put Hillary Clinton here with a five inch riser because that's the average difference in height between men and women. So just like you have a handicap in golf, they decided to handicap her five inches. Yeah, Ward's taller than her. Yeah, which would put her above Rudy Giuliani. But what's interesting is in the Econ- Economist article, they said that Barack Obama, who is still, we hadn't finished with the primaries when this thing was written and everything, was helpfully tall. <laughs> he was helpfully yeah, tall, but yeah. if this theory were correct, you'd think people like Fred Thompson and uh, Bill de Blasio would have made much bigger dents in their campaigns than they had. Because isn't isn't Bill de Blasio like almost taller than me? I, I'm six five and a half on a good day. I think I have de Blasio on one of the, exactly. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, Bill de Blasio's a giant. What is he in real life? I, I do believe, if I'm not incorrect, that he's, he's almost he's well six over six, six foot. Yeah. So um, anyway, um, what yeah, does look, this have to he's do? He's taller than Beto O'Rourke, who's six four. Yeah. So what's this got to do with Andrew Yang? Is he screwed because of his height, Cody? No, I think. I mean, I'll go back to the other image. I think if we're gonna get to the height thing, he's actually, you know, like five foot seven. Whatever website isn't listed as five seven is a joke, by the way. He's not. Yeah, if he's five foot yeah. seven, he'll be like <laughs> eight inches shorter than Bay. Anyway, that aside, um, I, I think just looking into all the data and the numbers, looking at the stage viscerally, just using my own head, um, it seems to me like where it would matter is if for whatever reason it was him and Beto on a stage at the end of it. Like, I, I kind of agree in that sense. When it gets down to two people and it's pretty close and it's kind of hard to split hairs, I think that's when you see height be the kicker. Because, again, I, why doesn't, you know, Shaquille O'Neal just run for president? You, yeah. who, well, why doesn't James Comey run for president? He's six foot seven. You know what I mean? Because I think it's more once you get all the way to the end and we're at the point where you're really splitting hairs, you're really like, how do I make that decision? I think that's when the subconscious kicks in and that's when things like height take over. So There is a um, movie that is waiting to get made where there's a riveting presidential election where one guy's taller and they fake an international disease in order to make the population vote for the taller candidate. I mean, that is like Jason Bourne wait, 5 who's waiting taller, to happen. Who's taller in swing vote? Who's taller in swing vote? Oh, you mean that Kevin Costner one? Yeah, do you remember who's taller? Oh. I think Kelsey Grammer is pretty tall, right? So he was That's one true. of them. So it's probably Kelsey Grammer. Was it? Was it Kelsey Grammer and a? Uh, hold. On. So we might have to call up Universal. I'll and look see it up right they, now. Hold on. If they scientifically accurately represented swing vote well, with well, Kevin no, Costner, remember, swing vote had a, had, a, had a cliffhanger. Maybe this will answer the cliffhanger. The swing note cliffhanger. Is that right? Okay. All right. Awesome. So anyway. Um, thank you so much, Nathan, for participating in our discussion. We're actually going to invite him on the show to talk a little bit about his uh, electoral volunteer. Kelsey Grammer, by the way. Like that. Uh, okay, Kelsey The Grammer. incumbent, President Andrew Boone in swing vote, he was the tall one. So just going by our logic, if anyone wants to know the end of the movie swing vote, Kelsey Grammer would win because he's taller. We just won the fourth act. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you, Nathan, very much for your participation and uh, giving us a bunch of... Uh, 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 food for thought. This was pretty awesome. Um, obviously, it's not cut and dry, but statistically significant, the person's height. And we will be uh, monitoring closely uh, exactly how much we think this will actually affect the Andrew Yang campaign. I think it would be interesting to go out in the street and maybe just like have them rate people on a scale of 1 to 10 and tell them their height and see what people say and test that theory. Anyway, um, if you haven't had a chance yet, please like this video, comment below. We're responding to all the comments still. If you want to contribute to the channel, there's a PayPal link in the description. If you want to pick up a hat, make sure you go out, check it out on problemsolverpolitics.com and also join us on Twitch Tuesdays and Thursdays for the live stream where you can call in at one eight three three psp radio this is Problem Solver Politics. We will see you in the next video.